Well, happy fall, y'all. Warm greetings from sunny South Carolina, where we're really getting close to our peak autumn time. Leaves are just beautiful, and the colors are oh so inspiring. I really love it when the trees are lit from behind by the sun. It just looks like stained glass. Welcome to another Mind Shot vlog, and really this video comes from something that's been frequently requested. Many of you are familiar with this, the Daniel Smith Steve Mitchell mixing palette I did in cooperation with uh, Wet Paint in Minnesota. This was really fun. Uh, they're, they're not available, so don't go rushing off to try to order it. Uh, however, I will link to all the colors in here if you've not ever seen this. So if you'd like to put together the same palette from tubes, you can do so. I had a really fun time choosing these colors and uh, those of you who have it or have seen it may remember that there were 12 pans that were unfilled so you could add your own colors and I've been asked many, many times to share what I might put in those. And as you can see here, I have filled them. So that's what we're going to talk about. Here's the colors if you want a quick preview. I replaced uh, four of the half pans with two full pans, and we'll talk about what those are. What you'll notice on here is a lot of muted colors, or many muted colors, and a few other additions. Just a note about choosing colors. Uh, don't slave yourself to any one person or artist's choice of colors. I always recommend you start off small. You start off with a very limited palette, maybe just six, uh, something in the primaries, um, till you know more about colors. You really should know why you're choosing a color, not just choosing it because someone told you to choose it. There is a lot, I mean a lot, of angst and anxiety about choosing the wrong colors, and it's really not that tough. I mean, you're not going to go that wrong, especially if you choose uh, a pre-selected set of colors. Most pre-selected sets um, are done so to be fairly multi-purpose, but don't choose too many. Don't buy a lot of colors. Uh, just because you feel like you need every color. It actually um, makes it very difficult to paint with. A lot of artists, me included, I have tons and tons and tons of colors, but it's, it's almost more of a collection. When I'm actually painting, I'm usually limiting myself off of my palette to maybe about a half a dozen to eight colors, even though the palette may have 12 or 24. But I think a lot about what these choices are going to be based on what I want to achieve, how I like to mix, and what I'm going to paint. And there are many, many roads to get to the same destination when it comes to painting and color. So the best thing you can do is ask questions, ask yourself questions, try to figure out why artists pick different colors, and then decide how that applies to you. So don't stress too much about color. But I'm going to try to uh, explain why I chose these colors and why I want them on this palette. So let's take a look. First color, Perylene Green. Daniel Smith has this lovely muted Perylene Green. And what I was aiming for in this palette was the ability to mix neutrals or neutralize a lot of colors quickly in interesting ways without having to experiment a lot with complements. You can definitely mute and neutralize colors with things like neutral tint or with a complement. But I was just looking for some quick shortcut ways to neutralize colors using these more grayed out colors or dusty colors if you will, like Perylene Green. So this will be great at neutralizing greens. Uh, blues work well with blues, work well with yellows and golds. So I wanted to add a green gold to this palette. and. Uh, this is very similar to uh, Azo Green on my M Gram palette. It's just more of a yellow, brilliant yellow green, and it's something that I use a lot in mixing. That's a very personal choice. Coupled with uh, Thalo Blues or Thalo Greens or Quinacridone Golds, you can just achieve just a really 
robust range of lively greens. It'll also combine really well with reds and uh, violets for some more muted tones. So something to think about. So another color, the next color, uh, something new to me is quinacridone sienna. Uh, I use uh, these sort of rusty colors to make my earth tones. Um, if you look at the original palette, uh, quinacridone gold, transparent red iron oxide, even the rose of ultramarine, and of course the raw umber, will make some nice earth tones. This uh, will give me another one to do that with. We can vary the intensity. You could go a different way. You could actually use PBR type uh, earth tone pigments. But this is going to be very similar in use to what I use red iron oxide for, but it's more orange. So this will fill the role of an orange. It's somewhere between the Hansa yellow and the Pyrrhal scarlet, but deep, deep in jewel tone and lending self really well to, uh, again, making those earth tones. Excited to see what that'll do. Next up is Paraline Violet. Really, really anxious to use this. It's not a color I've had a lot of experience using, but I know it's gonna be great. Again, it's gonna fill a role of sort of a quick, quick shortcut muting type color. Um, it'll get me to some beautiful neutrals quicker, but by the same token, I can cast the colors one way or another with uh, this choice of muted tones that I'm using. So Paraline Violet, wonderful. Now Imperial Purple was a choice I made because what I had on here was Rose of Ultramarine and these Daniel Smith pans were fairly limited in choice. Uh, this was the bluest violet. I really wanted something bluer than this, although I really have liked this Rose of Ultramarine. It's, it's become very useful. On my m grab palette, it reminds me a lot of quinacridone uh, violet. But uh, I wanted to put a much more blue-leaning purple on my palette if I could, and that's what this is. That's what the Daniel Smith Imperial Purple is. I use purple a lot. I use violets a lot in landscape, so glad to have it. Next up is Indanthron Blue. Now this just gave me another blue, but a very deep almost indigo like blue. So this is going to help if I need to mix some really, really dark darks. I'll have a number of ways I can do that on this palette. And I just love Indanthrum Blue. Really wanted to make a slot for that. This next one is uh, a, no, another new one for me, although I've experimented with it, I've never really painted much with it, and that's Soda Light Genuine. I really kind of uh, contemplated whether to use this or uh, Payne's Gray, or I, I was going to put Jane's Gray on there. Ended up opting for Sodalite Genuine. It's one of Daniel Smith's Primatex, the line that uses, uh, you know, genuine stone and it granulates a lot, which uh, I was really looking forward to. And it has that blue gray sort of look that you get with a Payne's Gray. So now I have uh, a couple of choices a, a warm leaning and a cool leaning. Uh, what I would call similar to neutral tint type colors or colors I can use as neutral tint. Yet one more neutral and this is uh, an almost black. In fact it uses a black pigment. Um, this is Alvaro's Caliente Gray and it's a, a, one of the Alvaro and Joseph's Bookvik colors that uh, the special sets that Daniel Smith put out. The Alvaro Caliente Gray was one of the warmest. It just had some really nice warm tones. So again, this is going to combine with some very warm colors uh, to do some interesting neutralizing. and can be used in very dark mixes, but as yet another form of neutral tint. And lastly, I wanted to be able to use this uh, with opaques, uh, which are handy when you're in the field. So I want to be able to use this in a, as a plein air palette. And so the Buff Titanium and the Titanium White, both of which uh, can mix with any of these colors and give you gouache-like opaques. That's the reason for those. Uh, buff Titanium is something I've not used before. So I'm anxious uh, to try that. And then of course the Titanium White. Now this is not Daniel Smith. It's the only one on the palette that is not Daniel Smith. This is Schminka. Very opaque gouache, and this is actual gouache. I feel like I've got a very well-rounded, very useful palette here that will serve well in 
plein air situations also. All right. Well, thanks everyone for watching. I appreciate it. Hope that gave you some ideas for some palette choices and some mixing ideas. And I hope you enjoyed with me just celebrating the fall colors of the season. We'll see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.